morning, Rocky Mount. I'm Crystal Dawes. Today we're going to be talking about something that affects many Americans and people worldwide, Alzheimer's. Results from clinical trials of four possible Alzheimer's therapies raise hope for an emerging new era in treatment of the disease. Were announced yesterday at the 2007 Alzheimer's Association International Conference. And with us this morning is Dr. Sam Gandhi of the Alzheimer's Association to explain the impact that these findings have had on the, on the future of this disease. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, Crystal. Fine. Good morning, Crystal. Fine, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. Let's jump right into it. What are the most important aspects of these clinical findings? Uh, well, there are several aspects that are important to recognize. Uh, most importantly, for the first time, we have medicines that are in the pipeline uh, that are aimed at the underlying cause of Alzheimer's, the buildup in the brain of a gooey material called amyloid that clumps and causes nerve cell death, is poisonous to brain cells. These medicines have now made it to phase three. There are three phases in testing new medicines, and this is the final phase before submission for approval by the FDA to be uh, available to everyone. So having medicines that are th like this, having these mechanisms that uh, attack the underlying disease and having them this far along in the approval process is unprecedented and extremely exciting. It is exciting. My, my grandmother has Alzheimer's and as I said in the beginning, there's so many people that are affected by it that um, it really needs to be taken a closer look at. What are some challenges um, that you found in the clinical trials? Well, trials for Alzheimer's, trials for Alzheimer's uh, have only been possible really for the, for the underlying cause for the past 20 years or so as we begin to understand the basic uh, biology and, and pathology. But try, uh, testing Alzheimer drugs uh, provide a special challenge in that they require a large number of subjects because the disease moves so slowly and the uh, testing of medicines takes up to a year or a year and a half. Testing each medicine uh, costs about $50 million. Wow, that is, a, that is a great deal of money, but as I said, so many people are affected by it, and I can't think of, I, there's a lot of reasons to put that money into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the disease is exploding. We are predicting as many as 100 million cases worldwide in within 50 years, and it threatens to crush the economies of not only other countries, but our country as well. It's very important that we maintain our commitment to research and, and maintain federal funding, which has actually been slipping lately. Could you give us an, um, some examples of the other therapies in the research pipeline? Uh, other, therapies uh, other therapies are uh, aimed uh, at different parts of the disease. There are medicines that are aimed at the energy uh, producing part of the nerve cell to help the nerve cell uh, maintain energy production and, uh, and maintain function. There are also other symptomatic medicines that seem to act right away, um, only act for maybe a year or so, but to be uh, clearly far better than, than, uh, than a placebo, a sugar pill. So we have uh, a whole variety. The, the, the breadth of the pipeline and the number of strategies that we have uh, entering these late, late stage trials uh, is, is just incredible. It is incredible. What do these findings mean in the research of Alzheimer's treatment? Well, they promise for us the uh, eventually we will be able, together with perhaps uh, advances in brain scans, which also are coming along at a, at a rapid rate, we may be able to develop screens for people and identify maybe in midlife uh, as a screening the same way that we do colonoscopy and mammography, identify people who are beginning to build up plaque and maybe are at high risk for Alzheimer's, begin them on one of these medicines and help their brains clear away the plaque and prevent them from ever having the first symptom. That's great. So we're working on preventative measures as well as, 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 well as curing it. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's the right. Uh, the same medicines that we're using to try and slow the progression in people who are already suffering will then be tested for their potential ability to, uh, to prevent the disease altogether. Great. What, what, do these, what do these new treatments, how do they differ from different models? 
Uh, While well, the currently available medicines only offer temporary and symptomatic relief, they don't touch the underlying process at all. So this is an entirely new era. Uh, these anti-amyloid medicines have, uh, there's never been anything like it before. Uh, so this is, is uh, uncharted area, uh, but it's very exciting to be making such progress uh, so, so rapidly now, really gaining speed. Um, if we can only sustain that momentum and uh, try and restore some of the federal funding that's been cut uh, by the current administration. Well, it seems to me that cutting the funding isn't, isn't helping us. And as you said, it affects many areas, not only families, but economic issues. There's so many, so many reasons to be going full steam ahead with this. Uh, yes, this, uh, yes, this disease, disease devastates, disease devastates uh, not just the person who's affected, but the caregiver and perhaps the whole family. Uh, the economic toll, the emotional toll, uh, is just uh, is just overwhelming for the for the caregiver and the family. Often, the caregiver uh, also develops um, uh, caregivers are at high risk for developing other medical illnesses because of the stress of caregiving, and then they're sick and unable to take care of the person who has Alzheimer's. That uh, can be a bit of a snowball effect. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure having this conversation with you and I'm sure that many of our viewers have been affected by this and I hope that we've helped them in some way. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. You too. And thank you Rocky Mount for joining us on WNCR-TV for news, views and interviews. I'm Crystal Dawes. We'll see you next time.